I'm Ashlyn. And I'm David. And we are Tango's parents from Orlando, Florida. So we got into free flight uh, after getting Tango from a pet store. He was clipped. And we, it was only a second consult with you online. And you saw him trying to fly and basically told us to do free flight. Yep. And uh, I was a little against it at first, but uh, I got to seeing how much Tango enjoyed it. And um, I could tell that that was what he wanted. So I started to get into it too. And I went downhill from there. <laughs> I meant to say uphill. <laughs> I actually meant to say uphill and I said <laughs> We're the most experienced free flyers and the worst to interview. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we've been doing this two For years? Two years now. Two years. So we, this is our third year in Moab, so two full years of free flying and probably a couple months before that with training. Um, and it's been, it's been better every year. Yep. It's steady improvement every year we come. Yeah, like it's definitely not the first time you get out here and fly, that's the end. Like we're still learning two years into it. So doing free flight as a couple presents challenges but I feel like there's so much we do together that's better because we get to have two different perspectives um, so it's not constantly up to me to read tango or up to David right. to read tango um, and like I am really bad about spatial reasoning and figuring out wind and it was kind of nice because I never had to I like I learned it but I didn't have to figure it out right away and yeah really helped. And we, we complement each other with our strengths and weaknesses and not only that but we also help to balance each other out so. yeah I'm very cautious and he's yeah, and I'll push Tango <laughs> a little harder yeah so we kind of I'll sit there and go no 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 and he'll go yes 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 yes, yes. <laughs> and we usually find a compromise and we find a compromise are you ready to go get? He's I over there. Yeah. So David is a small dot right there on that canyon. Are you ready to go get it? Ready? Conditioning for the hike recall. One. Two. Three. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
Look at there him. we go. Talking to him. Mika, Getting closer. Just communicating, but not, not tango, tango, tango. Yeah, I see. So tango's okay. climbing, yeah. climbing, climbing, climbing. He just made it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that blue dot on the canyon. <laughs> I don't know how well you guys can see it, but that's how far away he is. Sweet. I would give him a second, then he'll come back. <clears throat> yeah, he could even climb up to that next point bridge <laughs> with him. Seriously, because you guys are going to be super duper high, because you're going to be on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, so I would have him climb up to that other point with him so that he remembers where you are. David! Go up that way. <laughs> He's such a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> he can't argue with me over a canyon. So <laughs> this is how the relationship needs to be. <laughs> I'm going to call him. Okay, let me check her in a sec. Tango! Oh, it echoed. Oh, he already took off. I didn't even see it. Yep, he's over there. He's coming around the front. Woo woo woo! There he is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> nice. Hi. Good boy. We should be clocking him, seeing how long it takes. <laughs> well, remember when I was like. Yes, 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 and no, 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 no. Well, definitely that, we said it comes to a compromise most of the time, but that is not true. Sometimes it's a lot harder because we can't come to a compromise. And that was a lot more in the beginning, I feel like, when we really didn't quite understand everything. We were learning tango. Um, and so we were both unsure, and so we couldn't convince each other. Um, and the first year here was interesting <laughs> to say the least um, but I feel like each year we have gotten better I feel like another thing too that's kind of a bit more difficult is when you have your bird for free flight you make that bird velcro to you we have had to work really hard at the 60 40 with tango and in fact now we feel like it's really about a 50 50 um, to make it so that he's equally right. interested in both of us. We don't want him to ever only come to me or only come to David. So I think it's a bit harder as a couple in the sense that you have to come to agreement with the other person and um, you don't want to sabotage the training on your birds. So you, you, find a, you gotta find a place that you both agree and that's not always easy to do, especially when you're starting off and you really don't know where that place should be. Yeah, the energy with two people almost compounds. So there's your energy when you're working with your bird. Now you've got two people's energy working with one bird. And when we're in sync, it's that much more amazing. When we disconnect, it's that much worse. Um, and it's kind of where if we're not on page, flying the bird can't even be a decision that we're making at that point. We have to get us right before getting the bird right. The first outdoor trip was like, I almost feel like pre-free flight, really. Um, we came out here and it, it was a little bit different for us because we were the only ones. And we did not realize how I don't want to say bad, but like how, how not advanced we were. Uh, we came out here and he's landing in trees. He's landing on cars. He's having trouble descending. And I mean, to give him credit, he was still clipped. But it wasn't until after that tri trip that we really started doing the real training. Right. Right. That was just the start. And 
there we've been working on all sorts of different things training him outside and even and inside still to continue to advance um, free, the first free flight trip was just the start yeah and I feel too that each year even last year the second year we were here wasn't where he wasn't even up to par then he was at dino tracks he would fly but he would stay over ground um, he was very much doing more A to B's very hesitant to do big exploratories over landscapes he wasn't used to whereas finally this year we feel like he's really starting to play He's starting to do longer distances. Um, I feel like it was really cool this year with the um, Fisher Towers where David hiked probably about a quarter of a mile and just A to B's across this valley. That would not have been possible last year. Woo -woo, tango! Come on, Bobby. Come on. Come on. By returning on flight trips year after year, we've learned that your indoor training really doesn't go away. You still have to utilize all the skills you've learned to uh, apply them to your free flight training. Um, like in the mornings, we take Tango out and we see if you know we work with him and make sure that he's ready to go fly. And if he's not, we call it and we keep him in. We don't we don't fly him unless it's a good day for him. Which I think we really did this year even just in the last two days. We went outside yesterday, he flew wonderfully.
Tango, woo woo! Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah! Good boy. Good boy. Today was a totally different story. We get him out of the cage. He flies to David, to the cage, doesn't want to do anything, won't even do like a spin. Um, and so it's like, oh, no, no go. Uh, but we also don't have the pressure to force him with that. Um, because we're being here the third year, it's not like our first year where we were like, oh my gosh, have to fly, have to fly, have to fly. We are kind of like, you know, if he doesn't want to fly one day, we're okay with that. That's totally fine. And also we stayed the full, what was it, how long this time? How long were we here this year? Two, two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. So there's, there's not that pressure at that point. You know, it's one thing if you're brand new and only staying five days, you are like, it almost doesn't matter. You just got to get him out. Whereas here, we're kind of just relaxed. We're listening to him. So. <laughs> As there's a dying bird in the background. <laughs> Sounds like you locked the bird in the trailer. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know what that sound was. <laughs> Um, I think also, all right, I'll start over, I'll start over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who is that? It's Jinx. Jinx. Oh, gosh. Oh, I think another thing, too, that we've really learned coming here year after year is you've got, you are on your own journey. Uh, we were really fortunate the first year we came that we were the only new people. It just worked out that way that year. And so when we got here and Tango was landing in trees and on cars and uh, Jamie was pretending to be a bird and <laughs> trying to teach me, um, I didn't, I wasn't comparing myself to other people. I didn't have that kind of pressure. And coming here year after year and seeing multiple people coming with new birds and some birds are out there just you send them out once it's like they've been doing it for years and then other birds need not only this trip but multiple trips after and in the end the birds get to where they need to be it's just their own journey but we do kind of see that people hold their birds to other bird standards and that's I can I can tell that that would be hard I think it would have been really hard for me had we come and there had been a bird who was soaring and there's tango splatted somewhere <laughs> over there but I you know you've got to give your bird the time that they need um, they will get there so much in the beginning where I felt like I was trying to be perfect and I, and I wasn't even the bird I wasn't even worried about tango not being perfect it was about me not being perfect not holding my hand perfectly not standing perfectly not uh, calling it the perfect time and you know I learned those things but I was so hard on myself in the beginning and consequently I was really hard on David and I felt like if I was holding myself to that standard I had to hold him to that standard and when we started this he was not as into it as I was I mean he's definitely into it now <laughs> um, but he had not watched the videos, he had not done the things, and I would watch him do something and just go, what were you even thinking, right? Were you not thinking? Is your brain over there and your body here? Like I, and I would get frustrated him, and then I'd get frustrated me that I also couldn't do it. I knew what I was supposed to do, but couldn't do it. And that, I think that really slowed down our progress because it threw the energy off in every session that we were doing and so I I had to learn to just be more accepting of my flaws and to work with them to realize that there's some things that I'm gonna be really really good at and there's some things that I'm gonna always need to work on if I could go back and give myself some advice I think 
biggest piece of advice for me would be to listen to Tango more. Um, it's, it's hard because you have a goal in mind for what you're going to do that day and you want to do it. And the reality of it is the, you have to work with the bird. And the, the bird will tell you what, what's appropriate for the situation. But um, if I could go back, I would definitely listen to him better and more carefully. If you're thinking about free flight and you're thinking about how long it's going to take out of your day and how much energy is going to have to go into it and you're kind of you're looking at the cost of it and the travel and what you're going to have to do and it is a lifestyle change it is a commitment but if you're getting a living creature with wings who is born to do this you should do everything in your power you can for some people, I do know that maybe it's not possible to free fly outdoors, especially with smaller birds or if you've got special circumstances, but that's, that's no excuse not to at least try to fly indoors and to learn more about it and to educate others that can, that it's out there and possible. How's my hair? Uh, Bad? I mean, your cowlick's sticking up, but you're weird. Do you want me weird. to lick it? And, yeah. No, I don't want you to lick it. <laughs> like a cat? <laughs> Are you right?